A report this week found that nuclear reactors, small modular reactors, could have some promise and potential in Australia, but it's found not until the 2040s and it won't help with the push towards net zero by 2050. Let's get some analysis now. I'm joined by Technical Director at SMR Nuclear Technology, Tony Irwin. Tony, thanks for your time. What did you make of this report? Do you agree with its assessments? Yeah, I, th I think it's disappointing because it, it's another organisation just like the CSIRO that have produced a nuclear port without engaging any nuclear consultancy to get, you know, the expert advice. So uh, at sea, uh, had a law consultancy for the legal part, but but haven't got a nuclear one. So there's there's a lot of problems with the with the report. Um, which we, we, we can go through. Well, it's first of all, it says that the small modular reactor technology isn't proven and not sufficiently developed. Is that correct? No. So the problem is that what they've looked at is, is a, a system that is, is typical for sort of new developments in, in you go through a, an early stage and then a prototype and demonstrations, etc. So they're saying there's got to be a prototype built and then there'll be a commercial one. But what they're not looking at is, is um, say, that the GE Attache BWRX 300 based on their licensed advanced boiling water reactor. It's going to be deployed at Ontario Power Generation's Darlington site. When it's built there, it's a commercial design. It's not a prototype. It's exactly the same as they'll keep churning out. See, they, they've looked at GE back in the 1950s and said it took GE seven years to go from the initial BWR to this you know, the, 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 what it turned out to be. But it doesn't apply now. You know, we're going straight in, into commercial. So their whole of their timescales are, are wrong. The argument about the lack of skills and workforce in Australia, what do you say to that? Well, we've built building up skills ever since we started with AUKUS. But, I mean, going back to the days of, of Opal, you know, when... I was reactor manager at Opal. When we commissioned Opal, um, we engaged young graduates, we trained them up. You know, they're now operating the reactor. You know, we can do the skills part of it. Um, we have having to with, with AUKUS, and this is carrying on into the, in the civil side. But the, the other big problem, I think, with the report is this um, missing S SMRs. So they, they've missed out two of the most important ones, the Rolls-Royce UK one, which is very important to us because, of course, Rolls-Royce make all the, the nuclear reactors for the nuclear power submarines, and also the Westinghouse a, AP300, uh, which is another one which is in the, the, the UK selection process. So they've, they've missed out two of the most important ones. Um, they've, they've also got it wrong about the regulator because they say there's got to be a specific regulator for SMRs as the ONR in in the UK. Well, that, that's not true. The ONR in the UK licenses everything. You know, every research reactor, power reactor, SMRs, everything. We've got a world-class regulator in our Panzer. It's going to need some more resources to do power reactors, but but that's all. Okay. You know, there's, there's no specific SMR regulator required. 